tell us about the move uh, with areas yeah so we got him MRI today and it came back that he has a small fracture um, the way it was explained to me is if it was June I think there's a decent chance he could probably play through it it's not June and we have four games left so we IL'd him and got Rokio here yeah, we did. Carl and I talked to him today and kind of were laughing. We said, like, this is the worst kept secret in the world, but, you know, we, we don't want you to pitch anymore. And he kind of was even alluding, like, all of it, like, what if somebody got hurt? We're like, if we don't think you should pitch, we'll figure something out because this is for his future. And I mean, those kids, man, they did such a good job that letting them miss the last week isn't the worst thing in the world. You've dealt with pressure and different situations your whole career. How easy or hard is this week for you just dealing with everyone wearing t-shirts and being excited for this and you still have It's not, I mean, it's uncomfortable. I, 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 I know it's coming from a good place, which is always a nice thing. Just, you know, when you become a coach and a manager, it's always about everybody else, as it's supposed to be. So all of a sudden, when it's about you, it's a little, a little uncomfortable. But and like, it's, like I, I, like I don't need to do anything different. Like, like I, my my joy is coming, play cards with Tony, kick my ass. You know, <laughs> the, the the most frustrating part about today is I can't wear the T-shirt because it's me. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice T-shirt. I love when we get free stuff, but I can't wear it. Did you get any sleep last night? About the same as usual. Until I roll over my shoulder and then I wake up. No pizza or ice cream incidents or anything? Well, I think we were incident free. <laughs> Did I see Middleton here? Yeah. And that, and that's not friendship. That's just he wants a free t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that fool you for one minute. I saw Cody Allen here as well. He I think he's doing the... What, what, I don't know what they call it, but you know they bring guy. You know, and that's cool. I mean, you're, it, it's hard for your eyes not to light up when guys like like OT walked in the other day, and that's why we do this. I mean, you get fond of these guys, and, and you're supposed to. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It doesn't change the message. Sometimes they're hard, but they're fun to be around. I mean, Tomlin came back, was that about three weeks ago? Yeah. I finally had to tell him at one point, I said, Josh, I've been around you in a couple of years. I said, you got to slow down. So I can't understand you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you, know, do you expect this to be emotional, though? I know they're going to have a video for you, and however the fans show their appreciation. I guess the one thing about emotions is you don't know what they are until you live through them. Um, I, I, I'm in a good place. Like, like, I think I've been pretty honest about everything. Like, June and July were hard for me. I was grinding on it, and I think I got a little quieter than I was, am comfortable with. And, like, that's why I kind of told the players to say I apologize for that. Um, but once I came to that conclusion, I've felt fine. And... I will, I don't, you know, I, I don't know how it, probably more uncomfortable than anything, but again, I know it's a nice gesture. I, I, not dismissing that part of it, just like my joy is what I do every day and who I do it with. While you're recuperating, you're gonna watch that documentary on you? You know, maybe someday. I, I, I can honestly say I won't run to watch myself. That's uh, that's a lot. I, I kind of lived it and I'm afraid some of it might not be true. <laughs> but no, nah, I don't need to. I've, I've had a really good time living through it. I, I've probably had way more fun than you're supposed to. Do you expect though, Tito, in the ninth inning, fans to ask for a curtain call. I mean, I could see them wanting you to step out of the dugout and tip your hat one time. I don't even know how to answer that. I mean, like, 
I mean, what am I going to say? What, what if, I mean, they might not. They might, <laughs> they, you know, like, some of the guy might be pissed I made a pitching move. You know? <laughs> whatever, you know, it's, organic is okay. I don't need to think about I don't really need to spend time thinking about stuff like that. You know, how do you describe the job you're leaving versus the job you started 20 some years ago in Philly? Like, how, how has this role in baseball changed in your time? Well, I mean, when I first got to Philly, it was Lee Thomas and Ed Wade. And Lee Thomas and Ed Wade. I mean, that was kind of it. You know, now it's, you know, front offices are bigger, baseball operations. Now it's turned into baseball operations. And it's bigger. Um, I can't speak for any place else because I can only speak. I've been here 11 years, which is a lifetime. And that's one of the nice things is Chris said the other day, he's like, I know you know me better than I know myself. But on the flip side, they know me the same way. So a lot of conversations are either quick or easy because we kind of know how we feel. Like, it, it's just, it's it's comfortable, it's nice. I mean, it's a, it's I think it's a huge advantage. But, and I don't know that you can have that everywhere because just all the things that happened here worked out for the right reasons and it, it, it's probably why it lasted so long. So you know, I know the rules have changed, but it's, in your mind, the game changed from maybe when you first started managing to today. Um, probably is some. I mean, <laughs> what I don't want to be is the old guy. You know, the game's never as good as when I played. I think athletically, guys are far superior than when I played. I mean, they're if they they do things in the winter and they're they you know. I don't know if the game's played as much while kids are growing up and like you're seeing like showcases so they you know they run the 60 they throw it's part and they see how far they can hit it but I think repetition of playing games is missing and I think it shows up even at this level I know you don't <clears throat> prefer to take credit for things but talking about your bullpen guys in different people they just talk about they've grown up watching you use bullpens and having you use a bullpen but from, to them is special um, what, when did you realize like how to run a bullpen was one of the more important things to do? You know, it's it's funny. When I was interviewing in Boston, Theo was telling me, and I interviewed like a lot, and he said, uh, he goes, I need you to do a phone interview with, was the old uh, GM for the Tigers, uh, Bill LaJoy. Mm -hmm. He goes, and Bill was like an assistant to him. And I go, yeah, sure, whatever. And Bill got on and he said, he goes, hey, Terry, I'm going to tell you right up front, I did not have a lot of respect for how you handed your bullpen in Philly. So the conversation wasn't great. <laughs> but I hung up and I called him back because I was pissed. And I named him about 10 names. I go, do you know these guys? Like a couple. I said, well, that's my bullpen. I did the best I could. Like, you know, you I just I, I I do take a lot of pride in the, these and, and I think the players should that they we've kept them healthy because I think it's too easy for a manager just to say get two guys up now we, we rarely do that because I'd rather somebody accuse me of not being smart and keep them healthy because you can hurt guys getting them up in the bullpen every bit as much as by pitching in games. Terry, I know that um, so often you, you have uh, avoided talking big picture things with us, but as you know that the end of your time here is coming, have you allowed yourself to think about what you're most proud of accomplishing here? I, I, I don't do that. Um, I really enjoy the day-to-day. -day. You know, it, it got harder. That's why I'm going to shut it down, but um, living through stuff is what I really enjoy. Even this, the tougher times, when you do it with people you you respect and enjoy, like I think I said yesterday, you always felt like we figured out or try to, and I enjoy that part of it. But I I don't feel the need to 
you know, like I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna go get my body patched up again for about the 80th time and I'm gonna try to go get healthy and I'm in no rush to see, just to see, I'll just, you know, whatever. I'm not, I don't need to know tomorrow. You know, let's see what happens. Tito, how did you kind of come to terms with st statistics and, and you know, your kind of, your roots growing up with it? I mean, it, it seems like you found a balance that, that uh, before before a lot of other managers. Well, the year at Oakland was, was huge because they were pretty progressive in that area. And I saw them doing stuff that I kind of agreed with, but I like didn't know how to put it into practice before. And then, and I think sometimes numbers have taken a life of their own. But I think when you combine everything and try to find a good answer, that's that's the biggest thing is I don't want to ever do something not have a reason. And, and there's a lot of times when I know what the numbers are, and I don't do it because you're dealing with people, but I feel an obligation to at least know them. Have you thought about what you're gonna miss most? That's what I mean, I, I don't really, yeah. I mean, I'm, I think the easy answer is the people, because that's, the people in the game, the clubhouse guys, the, that's what is so special about it. What about the hog? What's the plan? The hog, is, uh, the hog has been uh, officially uh, put on ice. And so parts. There's not many left. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're aware. Well, they yeah, it got stolen again, <laughs> but this time, they stripped it. It's like they took a baseball bat to it. And the worst part was they defecated on it. I'm telling you, man, I told the policeman when I talked to him, I said, if they bring back the death penalty. <laughs> when did this happen? When did this happen? Uh, it's been about 10 days or so. It's been a while. Been in mourning. They got it in the clubhouse under a blanket. What is it you're right on now? That's not Stuart. It's not the hill. It's that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not good. I heard you got a pothole the other day. Yeah, you got a pothole too, right? Pull up, Brent. What's that? Stuart, you're crying about pothole. It was going down East 4th, and there was a couple men coming my way, and I'm just trying to be polite, because I'm on the, you know, you're supposed to be walking. So I veered over, and it's cobblestone. Yeah. Evidently, one of them was missing. I went over the handlebars. I mean, over. It's amazing how much you can see of your life <laughs> in that moment. And I hit hard, man. And my, I had my flip flops on, one's over there. And, and naturally, the guy's rung up to me. He goes, Coach, coach. I'm like, No, it's not me. <laughs> and, and he said, Are you okay? And I said, Hey, don't worry. I said, My dinner's laying on the. I said, see if my dinner's okay. <laughs> but that one, it hurt. And then you went on to eat it? Was dinner okay? I, I scraped up whatever was left. <laughs> but I knew when those guys were there, I'm like, this ain't gonna be a secret for long. Mm -hmm. You kept it, you kept, kept it quiet for a while. I'm sure there's some guy on the It still it. hurts. It doesn't? Oh. I was worried that thing couldn't make it with the hill. Well, I had to push a little bit. <laughs> I heard you laugh. <laughs> Somebody said he's going to turn around. It's hard because you, you, I hate to be rude, but like people yell, I can't take a hand off there to wave. And I know people are like, oh man, you know, thinks he's hot shit. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wherever you go, you're not going to be able to probably go home to work or wherever else as quickly as you have here. Like having that hog has been pretty, pretty nice for you, hasn't it? This has been the greatest setup ever. I mean. I lived two blocks from the ballpark. The farthest I ever lived was down at the Hilton, which is about a half a mile, maybe. It's the greatest setup ever. I don't know too many places where after games, the police are either high-fiving or telling, hey, just hang in there, or, you know, cut around this car, you know, I mean, it's, it's nice.
the left pillow gets slashed your tires and the left ear gets up your gets up your oh. took the hog. I don't know, man. There's some there's some injustices in this world that Thank you. you guys good? Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.